Hello brothers and sisters, I have a message from the Lord to his ministers all over the world. This message is for people who are working in the vineyard of the Lord. Before I pass the message, let us pray. We come to you, our Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ. This is a message that you have given to me. I pray, our Father and King, help me to pass it out. As many that we hear your word, Lord, I pray that your word will have positive impact in their lives. King of kings, a Lord of lords, please use this medium to correct your children so that people can be drawn back to you. May this message touch souls so that your kingdom can be populated. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. My name is Hosanna David, and the Lord gave me this message to pass it to his ministers. Before I pass this message, I want to read a few verses of the Bible to us. Exodus chapter 5, beginning from verse 1. And afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus said the Lord, God of Israel, let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord. Neither will I let Israel go. And they said, The God of the Hebrews had met with us. Let us go, we pray thee, three days' journey into the, into the desert and sacrifice unto the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with a sword. Praise the Lord. I also want to read to us Jeremiah chapter 23 verses 1 and 2. Woe unto the prophets that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, said the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people, ye have scattered my flock and driven them away, and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, said the Lord. I also want to add uh, verse 9 following. Mine heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man, and like a man whom wine had overcome because of the Lord and because of the words of his holiness. For the land is full of adulterers. For because of swearing, the land mourned. The place and places of the wilderness are dried up. And their cause is evil. And their force is not right. For both prophet and priest are profane. Yea, in my house have I found their wickedness, said the Lord. Wherefore their way shall be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness. They shall be driven on and fallen therein. For I will bring evil upon them, even the year of their visitation, said the Lord. This message is not for any particular denomination, but the Lord said his ministers all over the world. It is not for every minister of God, but it is for those who are unfaithful in the house of God, those who are fallen, yet are still working in the field. Before I pass this message out to us, I want to let us know a little background. I had a dream on November 20, 2001. 
and in this dream, we were in a church. A minister of God was preaching and he was saying, we are the fruit bearers. He was, when I looked, I looked back and I searched, I discovered that the fruit bearers were no more. And I started crying. I was weeping and I was crying that, ah, where are the fruit bearers? When I woke up, I asked myself, what are the fruit bearers? I did not have much understanding about the dream. Not until 2005 that I actually uh, received the call of God and God told me some things about the state of the church that the church has fallen. Many of his ministers are not actually doing the work he has asked them to do. That many of them are just making noise all over the places, but they are no longer faithful to him. That there are lots of false prophets who are proclaiming false doctrines and leading people into hell. Late 2016, the Lord told me that there is a message he wants me to pass on to the world. And he gave me the words of the message. And while he was telling me, I had to write every bit of what the Lord told me down. Because the, the, the message is heavy and I, I didn't want just to pass it out from my own memory but i had to put everything down as the lord has commanded me i know this message is going to offend a lot of people but i have to forget about the offense it will do to some persons and just obey god it actually is taking me a lot of courage to come to pass this message to the world because I know uh, there are people in the world today who may feel offended and even decide to plan harm in their heart but I've forgotten about anything man can do to me because it is the message first it is not our lives first the Bible says Whosoever that will save his life will lose it, and whosoever that will lose his life for my sake shall find it. And even before I pass the message, about four or five days ago, I had a dream. And in this dream, the Lord told me, He showed me a minister of God who is known all over the world. He even he has a cable station. He, have, he, he has a TV station, his ministry, his ministry is big. He has once held a national position uh, in this country. He, he has once held a national position in the Christian Association of this country, Nigeria. And the Lord showed me and said, look at this man. He has fallen. He is going to hell. He's leading people to hell. And I said, God, okay, let me go and tell him. Let me inform him that he is going to hell and that it's not working for you. And God said, I have sent many people to him. I have asked him to repent different occasions, but he refused to repent. The worst part of it is that whenever people go to him, he fights them and he said, God, that I can write anonymous letter without my name and send it to him. But God said, no, do not inform him because he has diabolical powers. Even if you write anonymous letter and post it to him, he has a way through his demonic means of tracing the messenger in order to fight him. Leave him alone if he fails to repent. He will come and meet me and face judgment. Brethren, this is the situation of the church today. It is just a few, few individuals 
that are actually doing the work of God. There are thousands of ministers of God who are falling and are deceiving people, um, messing up the gospel of Jesus Christ and sending people to hell. Um, I want to pass the message to us the same way I received it. The Lord told me that there are three major sins of today's pastors and false prophets. Here are they. The Lord said, You have erased the memories of heaven from the hearts of my children. This is because you yourselves do not have heaven in view as your focus. Material prosperity is your focus. Many of you know that you will not enter heaven and have given up all hopes. As a result, you have resolved to enjoy your life to the fullest. Two, you have left the true gospel I gave you to preach. Three, you have covenanted yourselves with the devil. Hear what the Lord says, you Pharaohs. Because you have done this, I will not prepare your punishment in a hurry, but I will carefully fashion your place of torment according to the degree of the sorrow of my heart. Because you have killed and slaughtered those I sent to you to call you back to myself, and you do not listen to my word that I give to them, I will repay you by giving everlasting deafness to your cry in hell. Today is your day. Tomorrow is my day. I shall give life and order to the idols you serve on earth, and they shall torment you forever. Also, the souls you deceive shall team up in hell to torment you. In hell, they shall repay you double for your wickedness and deception. And the Lord made me to understand some things. And he told me there are lots of ministers, many, many ministers, many who call themselves pastors, many who call themselves bishops, many who call themselves archbishops, Many who call themselves prophets, the Lord told me many of them were actually possessed while they were young. That many are possessed with the spirit of witchcraft. Some of them are possessed with marine spirits. And this is what the Lord says concerning this category of persons. Many of you say, I grew up to realize that I was possessed and I decided to use the power to do good and also work for God. But this is what the Sovereign Lord says to you, O oh man, can a man serve two masters? You cannot drink of the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You still have the opportunity to repent now. And I, Jesus Christ, will deliver you and come and live inside of you through my spirit. But if selfishness causes you to shut me out, I will also shut you out of my kingdom that is at hand. Then the Lord said, Today I lament and bewail my ministers, because many of them have become rebels. They have become unto me as pharaohs. This message shall be the last warning to some of them. Some shall not live to hear this kind of warning again. I am already standing at the door waiting for them. And the Lord showed me two heinous crimes of these false pastors and prophets. You fight against my servants that are faithful to me. Out of hatred, you fight and kill those who have my true spirit. You condemn those I, Jesus, sent to warn my children. You end up dragging their names into the mud by accusing them that they are possessed. 
You do this because you hate correction. You gather my people and you lead them to your Lord and Master Satan. If you had not kept them in bondage in your Egypt, where you feed them with lies, their, their hearts would not have been hardened against me, their Creator. But your wickedness does not allow them to hear the truth and be saved. Behold, my judgment comes against these pastors who make themselves wolves and thorns in the midst of my sheep. Today is your day, tomorrow shall be mine. You support the kings and the leaders of this world in their rebellion against my laws. If you had resisted them to tell them the truth, many, many would have repented. This world hates me. The leaders of this world are rebelling against me. The kings of this earth have turned their backs on me. Yet many of my pastors do not see anything wrong with their rebellion. And because you team up with the kings of this earth to rebel against me and obey Satan instead of me, you shall spend eternity with these same kings in the lake of fire. In hell, you shall remind me of my mercy, but I will not listen. Assess my mercy now, if you really need my mercy. What is this altar that you have erected in my house? You say, we have not erected any altar besides your altar, O Lord. But why do you allow Jezebel to erect the altar of sexual immorality in my house? You have helped the altar of sexual immorality to grow by the reason of your sacrifice of lawlessness upon it. I have no delight in casting anyone into hellfire. This is why I bring my warnings and judgments to you here on earth now that you are that you still have the opportunity to repent. Now answer me, you pharaohs, when you go to covens and demonic altars to get powers, is it for the goodness of my church? Where in my word is it written that those who work for God must belong to secret courts? But you have made it mandatory for yourselves to join satanic courts in order to get powers, protection, wealth, and fame. You have even used your demonic wisdom and deceptive powers to initiate your fellow pastors into serving demons. My wrath will soon catch up with you like lightning. When you sacrifice one soul in order to get power to save 100 souls, does that make you not guilty of murder? Do I not command you that you shall not murder? Exodus chapter 20 verse 13. Which God do you offer human sacrifices to? Do I need human sacrifices? You kill and sacrifice human beings to demons in the secret and in the open you put my holy name upon your lips, the same lips with which you drink innocent blood and proclaim without fear, we are the servants of the living God. When you have multiple sex partners to satisfy your unusual urge, do you still call yourself my servant? Who can get my holy path through sex rituals? The souls of the women and the, the young men you sacrifice through sex rituals are lamenting in hell. Many of you take advantage of weak women. Because of your cleanness, many marriages have been dissolved. You have rendered many guests useless as a result of your sexual immorality. Hebrews chapter 10 verses 12 and 26 make it clear 
that Jesus Christ offered himself once and for all time a sacrifice for sin. Therefore, there remains no more sacrifice for sin. Will you deceive people in my name to perform all these evils and still go unpunished? My judgment shall come swiftly upon you like the flood of Noah. How can you take your stand to chase away Jezebel and rebuke her daughters who come into my house half naked with sensual dresses when you are on assignment for the devil who is your master and God? Am I a God of nakedness? Have you not read that I made a garment of skin for Adam and Eve when their nakedness was not properly covered? What is this altar of sexual immorality you have erected in my house? Brethren, it is very painful today that those who are made shepherds in the house of God, many of them don't actually know their work. It is painful that it is difficult to differentiate those the Lord says you are the light of the world it is difficult to differentiate many of them from those in the world a Christian going to church in this our generation can dress like a club girl can dress like a club guy it is painful it is painful. Sometimes I weep for the church. It is painful that these people, these false pastors, are leading people into hell. I was in church during one of our Friday fasting program, and sleep came upon me. And then the Lord revealed to me a female putting on bomb shot. And I saw a wedding ring. This lady was putting on a wedding ring. And I saw the bomb shot. I didn't see the face. And I, I heard the voice of God. The voice was so serious. It was full of anger. And the Lord said, these people will never, never see my face. And I woke up. Please, those who are church members, don't go to hell. Many of these pastors are on their way to hell. They know they are going to hell. It breaks my heart. Please, don't go to hell. In Matthew chapter 24, where Jesus talks about the signs of the end time and his second coming, he did not make mention of Satan, but he talks about the activities of false prophets. False prophets today and false teachers. They are of a greater threat to Jesus than Satan himself. Please, don't follow these people. Come out of her, my people. That is what the Bible says. Come out of her, my people. When some of you give Holy Communion to your church members, is it to the remembrance of my death? If you do it because I command you to do it, why do you offer it to idols first and pollute it with demonic powers? These substances from covens are they ingredients of the communion of my body or my blood? Why do you bewitch and enslave my children with the last supper that is for the remembrance of my death? Why do you exploit my people?
and milk them of all that is called spirituality and give them worldliness. If you give my church another blood instead of my blood that was shed for their salvation and redemption, then be ready to show to me the Savior whose blood you offer to my sheep. You take part with Satan to mock my death like traitors. You trade away the weak that desire to know me and you put them in demonic bondages. If any man that commits this sin dies in it, such one shall be in the hottest part of hellfire. Just as Judas Iscariot betrayed me, his Lord and Master, so also many of today's pastors betray me, their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Some of you hearing this warning cannot repent again because your conscience is already set with a hot iron. But you have the opportunity to hear this warning so that it can be a witness against you on the day of judgment. All these souls under your care were all bought with my precious blood. But you betray and sell them to Satan in exchange for power, wealth, and fame. The same way Pharaoh would not let my chosen people go and worship me. So these pastors and prophets prevent these people from worshiping me in spirit and in truth. Then the Lord said, At Calvary, my hands and feet were pierced. In hell, these pastors who have covenanted themselves with Satan shall face the highest level of torment among humans. With my whole heart, I will repay them in my wrath. Wicked pastors and prophets, let my people go. Stop betraying your Creator. You will soon die to meet me. You will soon leave all the wealth and fame you are gathering on earth. Foolish pastors, let my people go. Now hear what the Lord of hosts says. On these conditions, will I accept you back? If you repent today, I will forgive you. You must be ready to give up all your evil past, your witchcraft, and I will deliver you from the evil spirits that possess you. You must give out the properties and the wealth you greedily gathered for yourself. Give them to my church and the poor. You must come out publicly and expose Satan. You must tell the whole world how the devil had previously used you to deceive people. You must then start preaching holiness and righteousness. In doing this, you will save some of those you have had in their hearts against me. You must live a holy and a righteous life and walk before me in truth and righteousness for the rest days of your life. If you cannot do this, the mercy of God you rely on shall fail you on the day of judgment. Have you not heard that it is only the merciful that shall obtain mercy? Matthew chapter 5 verse 7. Shall I be merciful to a merciless pastor whose heart was not touched 
by the thousands of souls that are perishing. No, if you want to assess my mercy, on the day that you must stand before me to give account, then you must be merciful from today. This is mercy, that your heart be touched by the souls of the perishing. This is mercy, that you tell them the truth, that God is holy, and everyone who names the name of the Lord must depart from evil, for God is holy, and without holiness, no man shall see God. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 19, 1 Peter 1, 16, Hebrews 12, 14. This is mercy that you turn these people's hearts from following Satan so that they can be saved. This is mercy that you support the weak and not kill those who tell you the bitter truth and those who oppose you because this is mercy that you stop robbing the poor to enrich yourselves. This is mercy also that you tell the rich whose souls are perishing the bitter truth. This is mercy that you should pity your own soul and retrieve him from the hands of Satan by cancelling your covenant with Satan, which exchanged your soul for earthly possession. This is a message that the Lord asked me to pass on to his church, especially his ministers. Please accept this message. The judgment of God will soon come. This is the early hours of this morning. It is just 6 14 a.m. Before I deliver this message, I had a dream this night. And in the dream, I was preaching and telling people that the coming of the Lord is near. He is near. The Lord will soon come. Please stop pursuing the things of this world. Jesus is at hand. Sin is crazy. Stop making miracles and financial prosperity. Your number one message and only message. People are dying. People are going to hell. Thousands of souls are perishing. People are going to hell. Please repent. You may be known all over the world as a minister of God. But if Jesus doesn't know you, if the Father does not know you, of what good is that to you? If the Lord tells you on the last day, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, of what good is that to you? Please repent. Please repent. Please. I go down on my knees and I beg you, please love your soul. Please love your soul and repent. Please repent. The Lord is near. The rapture will soon come. Jesus is coming again. Please stop leading people into hell. Stop telling people that dressing in a sexual way is not sin. Stop inviting prostitutes into the church and encouraging them to remain prostitutes in the church. Please stop encouraging cultism in the house of God. Please, please stop encouraging gay marriage. It is a sin. It is a sin. Please tell them the truth. You will go to hell if you fail to repent. You will go to hell. When I had accident, 
2010. And I was unconscious. I faced the judgment of God. It was terrible. The Lord showed me mercy. Please, it is real. Today, I have just one leg. The accident took away my left leg. I had transtibia amputation. I use prosthesis today. I know what it means to offend God. Please repent. Love your soul. Please repent. And those of you who are church members, please love your soul. Stop running after these false prophets. Run after the word of God. Follow the Bible. If what your pastor is telling you is not in alignment with the truth of God's word, please don't obey him. Escape for your life. Jesus said it before now that in the last days, false prophets and false Christ shall arise and they shall deceive many. Please don't be among the many. The Lord is near. I'm on my knees begging you. Please, both pastors, bishops, reverends, apostles, prophets, evangelists, deacons, teachers, please, including church members, repent. The Lord is near. Stop offending the Lord. May the Lord God Almighty help you that listen to this message to repent please repent the lord is near once again i'm Hosanna david please i beg you repent god bless you